Hello and welcome back. Now I'm going to just have a few concluding words about the Human Development Index and talk about some of the ways that you can use it to look at differences in human development experience within countries as well as just across, uh, across countries as we've been doing. And so just a couple comments here that um, notice that the correlation between Human Development Index and income per capita is not that strong. You see that in the text, and I'm going to bring it out a little bit more in terms of a couple of tables in, to, to point you to in, in a moment. Um, but in addition, human development indexes or human development experiences are not fixed in the way that your bauxite reserves are or something of this kind. They can be affected by policy. That human development index and human development can be affected by policy. Right. So one example. It's only a partial example because there's certainly a long way yet to go, but it is the case of South Africa. And under apartheid, the difference was around 60 between the country's income rank, average income rank, and its human development index rank, which was much, uh, much lower. As of the late 90s, as we were um, getting into the post-apartheid um, period, that had shrunk to 49. And the most recent data show that the distance between the per capita income rank and the um, human development index rank has shrunk to around 23 points. And this is the result of deliberate and active policy to try to um, right or redress the historical extreme imbalance with investment going into white South, South Africans rather than black South Africans to give much more focus on human um, human uh, development, education, health for black South Africans. So, looking at this, table 2.4, I'll direct your attention. I think it's informative to look at this um, table and, and think through it and, and um, maybe even try out some calculations if you want. Start out as often with some comparator developed countries, Canada, the US, and the UK often use. They happen to be 12, 13, and 14 in rank. And so that these selected countries and the selections often are related to the case studies found throughout the text, um, run all, um, through various countries in terms of their ranking down through Niger, which is currently the lowest ranked on the human development index. It's number 189 out of all the countries ranked. And it also shows in this table the components for constructing the index, and you can use these as an illustration to construct them for yourself. Here's the HDI value. It ranges from 0.926 to 0.354. Uh, I believe Norway was the highest in this year. And what I really want to focus on, you focus your attention on, is the difference between GNI per capita rank minus HDI um, rank, which can be quite um, dramatic so that, for example, 43. So Cuba appears in its ranking on the Human Development Index 43 um, uh, ranking points above what you would expect based on its income per capita um, ranking. In contrast, Equatorial Guinea is found at 80 positions lower in the Human Development Index than in income per capita. So it has a, a lot of uh, national income from, from, uh, from resource exports and highly unequal. So this gives you a good idea in comparing countries. There's a, another way to look at it, which is to group countries specifically by income. And so in this table, table 2.5 in the text, there are groupings of countries based upon their per capita income, those near 1,000, near 3,500, near 7,500, 10,000, and 20,000. So just to take one to illustrate, we have countries with a GDP per capita, in this case, near $3,500. And so that we have countries ranked from 139 all the way to 165 in this group of that are near 3,500. In, in fact, they range from 3,300 to 3,800. But it's just a way of grouping countries to, to, uh, to see 
Uh, for, so for the case of Bangladesh, it's eight points higher than you would predict on, on the HDI than from what you think on the basis of income. Whereas Sudan is 22 points lower on the Human Development Index than would have been um, predicted. So you get some idea here um, as well. So for, so, um, for example, among those at $10,000, um, Sri Lanka is uh, 21 points higher than you'd predict, whereas Namibia 18 points lower. So this is just getting at more that there is variation, that income does not perfectly predict by any means the amount of human development. And so an emphasis of this to keep in mind is that policy can matter so that human development differences result sometimes from different focuses of policy. In all of this, we often talk about lowly ranked countries. I think it's important to realize that in the Human Development Index, as in many other characteristics of development that we're interested in, there's been enormous progress over time. So the Human Development Index was launched in 1990, and this data carries from 1990 to 2015. Even though the calculation changes, it's, it looks back so that there's a consistent calculation over time. And so if you look at 2015, you see that, well, East Asia and you see that Latin America are doing better than South Asia, better than Sub-Saharan Africa. And the same was true back in 1990. However, human development has been improving in all of these regions. So you have to look at performance over time, not just compare areas at a point in time. This is actually extremely encouraging, the amount of human development progress um, that was made in this quarter century. So that's one thing to underline. Right, so um, I said that I, well, let me go back and just remind you um, how the standard calculation used to be done, why, it's, um, uh, why it was um, attractive, it's, it's sim simplicity. So they used to just take, find an income index, a life expectancy index, and an education index, add those up and divide by three, or what's the same thing, multiply each by a third, add them up. Um, and that was the human development index. So that, again, the reason why we don't take this otherwise appealing in its simplicity approach is that it pays no attention to how well-rounded a country is in these three different dimensions. It just assumes perfect substitutability. So with the study that I'm about to show you, however, we are um, still looking at this human development index calculation, but you can redo it with a geometric mean calculation and the same basic principles hold. So here we look at variations, not just across countries, but within countries in different dimensions. So first we look at the case of Guatemala and we have the overall human development index in this year for Guatemala, uh, just eyeballing it, maybe 0 0.6667, right? Um, and so, however, when you take the data on the individuals that were used as a, um, as a survey to find out what the overall values were in the, in the country, right, um, and divide people by their ethnic groups, you see enormous variations. So with respect to the Ladino, the majority though they may actually be a minority in numbers, but majority population, Spanish-descended uh, people, that their levels are comparable in human development to Indonesia. However, if you take some of the indigenous peoples, they are faring far, far worse in terms of human development, and so the HDI brings that out. Take the Kechi people, um, they are in their human development levels much closer to that of Cameroon. And um, we, there's some discussion about the case of Guatemala in a case study uh, related to uh, conflict in Chapter 14. But part of what, um, what happened is not just even centuries of, of um, ethnic um, oppression. In fact, there was a genocide campaign not, long, not that long ago um, in, um, in Guatemala, 90s, I think, 80s to 1990s. Um, let me also just point out, however, that you can, in addition to ethnic groups, also look at um, regions within a country. So in this case, the country featured is Kenya, Nairobi, the capital, 
on average, there's huge inequality in, in Nairobi, is around where Turkey is, the port, port city of Mombasa, around where South Africa is. But finally, um, Busia district, which is way to the west in Kenya, bordering Uganda, a poorer area where some of the poverty studies that we'll talk about this semester and are in the text were actually carried out. Um, um, Busia is, in, in this case, on the order of Mali. Turkana is even below Niger in terms of its human development index, Turkana, to the north. So we can do this kind of analysis. And last, just very briefly, you can also do rural and urban comparisons. So this is the case of China. This is China in terms of its much higher urban human development index than its rural um, in, the, in, in this, this year. Um, that's still the case. China has improved since. Um, but if you look at a very wealthy area, Shanghai, it's famous for the city, but there's actually an outlying rural area included in that, in that province. Right? So urban area equivalent to Greece, but rural area significantly lower. Now we'll look at the case of Guizhou. The urban area, even though it's a less developed province, was still doing as well as, even slightly better than the average for China. Whereas the rural area was at the level of Cambodia. So in general, rural areas in developing countries are poorer, they're doing less well on human development indicators also. It's not just income, but human development as well. So those were the comments I wanted to make to wrap up on human development index, and I'm looking forward to our discussions about it. Thanks.